Oke, okay, hi guys. Welcome in our uh, chemistry lab. It's been so long. Uh, today we are going to perform a redox reaction, ya, yeah? reduction and oxidation of peroxide with the oxidator of uh, permanganate, kalium permanganate. So what are the materials that we need? Okay. So first of all, we need the uh, kalium permanganate. Oh, sorry, potassium permanganate. Yeah, kalium is in Indonesia. So potassium permanganate, which is a uh, 0.03 molar. Okay. And then after that, we need a uh, uh, peroxide. Yeah, we need peroxide. Uh, this still this is still in percentage. Yeah, because we make the peroxide are from the Uh, commercial concentration that is sold in the uh, market, yeah. So it, it's in percentage. Of course, we can calculate it actually. Yeah, we can calculate it. But right now, we will do titration in order to know the amount of the peroxide that is reacting in redox reaction. And then the next is what we are uh, using because remember that the redox reaction uh, by using man uh, permanganate should be in uh, acidic yeah at least in this case yeah so we use the sulfuric acid one molar to uh, add up the acidic ph into our reaction now i already actually uh, made the two samples yeah the two samples in earlier class but then i will explain first how we are doing it so first of all in uh, in this experiment We suppose actually to uh, to give a nickname to every reactant that we have. But right now, because this is just for practice, I already told you what it is. Okay, so this one supposed to be the nickname is FA1. FA1. So we can uh, add FA1. Okay, I'll add up uh, FA1 to it. And then Uh, okay. okay, and then after that, the uh, sulfuric acid, yeah, the code is Fa2. Yeah, I'll add here Fa2. Now, the peroxide, the peroxide stock that we have, this is peroxide stock that we have. This is called Fa3. Yeah, this is the peroxide stock. Okay. So the first step is that you are going to perform a dilution. How is the dilution done? So this is the product of dilution. This is the product of dilution. We have done the dilution uh, before, yeah, uh, to help you focus with the reaction. Okay, yeah. This is the dilution, the diluted one. How do we dilute it? I'll just uh, share with you how the dilute the dilution is uh, happening. So we take 25 milliliter of Fa3, and then after that we add into the chemical flask, and then we uh, add the water uh, so that the volume of the solution is 250 milliliter. So it means that we are adding 225 milliliter of aqua des or destillate water uh, so that the dilution factor is 10 times. Okay. Next. Then what we are doing after we get the diluted one or that we give the code as FA4, yeah, the next step is that we are going to make the sample. So this is the sample, yeah. Uh, it's already made for you, yeah, already prepared for you. How do we do that? So we take 25 milliliter of FA4, we take 25 milliliter of FA4, and then we uh, pour it into the uh, onical flask or Erwin Mayer. And then after that, to add the acidic situation or acidic pH, Do we add 20 milliliter of sulfuric acid or Fa2, yeah? And then after that, we pour it into the same conical flask, okay? And then after we have the uh, both reactants inside, we mix it, okay? Then, now, we are ready for doing the titration, okay? Now, let's 
let's see the uh, viewer. Yeah, this one over here. Yeah. Now, now this is viewer. Uh, what we are going to use for uh, calculating or measuring the volumetric or the volume of the uh, KMNO4 that we are going to add. Now, even though this is a titration, but this is not acid and base titration. So remember, guys, that the acid is only to uh, to help the reaction. So this is redox reaction. Yeah. So in this case, uh, we are going to pour the uh, KMnO4 into our uh, burep until uh, zero. Okay. But before, this one has been uh, actually prepared for you, but if the beginning you prepare it by yourself, you will see that there is an empty space over here, okay? And you have to release your, uh, you have to release your reactant first, yeah? In order to have this empty space filled. This time it's already filled. Yeah, this time it's already filled. See, you see, this one is already filled. Okay. You're supposed also to uh, be really careful with this. <laughs> okay, next. Okay. Okay. Done. So now we are going to fill in the burette. Now, always uh, prepare uh, the pack in close position when you. Uh, when you pour the reactant to your burette. Okay. And below zero? Yeah, and below zero. Uh, after this, I will give you a trick. What if, let's say, okay? What if, yeah? What if, what if I am too short? To do this, yes, you have to be uh, open mind to the situation and then find the solution, the safe solution. Okay, wait, I'll take my shoulder first. Okay. Now, oh, yeah, it's okay. Let's just uh, clean up from here. Yeah. Now, first of all, yeah. yeah? First of all. <laughs> okay. Now, but what if I am too short to perform this kind of uh, working? Okay. So, the, the best, best way, way if, uh, let's say you are like me, I'm also quite short in this case. What we can do is that, okay, we lower it to our level. So, uh, you know that we usually have the stool. Yeah, some people put it on the stool, but it's actually quite dangerous because the stool is not stable. Okay, so the best thing is, uh, if you want to make it stable, okay. All right, yeah, let me set this again, yeah. So the best thing is you lower the whole thing to have the way you carry it, yeah, onto the floor. Just like this. Okay. Yeah. Now can you see that? All right. So be careful that remember, okay, that as much as possible we we do it. Safety. Okay. Okay. Now, it's okay to put it more than zero. So what we have to do is that we have to make it zero. Remember, uh, as much as possible, try to find the URF which is not leaking. <laughs> Right now, we are doing improvisation, okay? It's still leaking. So, <coughs> now, release it first. 
until it's zero. Okay, uh, uh, at this time, you have to somehow rely on my uh, perception here for looking at the zero. Okay. Okay, guys, uh, because it's leaking, later we'll read again the, uh, the reading, yeah? It's not starting from zero, it's not started from zero because of the leak. Okay, now we carry back to our table. Okay, so Pak Carlos, would you mind please uh, help us do the reading at the beginning? What is our final reading? So this is zero point eight. Zero point eight. Now take a look, guys. Yeah, before I continue, again, uh, the sample already made for you. This is the color that we want to happen, and this is uh, oh sorry, this one. This is before the titration. So. The before titration, it is colorless. After titration, it's slightly pink. Slightly pink. And for your information, in order to keep the color the same, I would suggest that you would not throw away uh, your ready sample. Why is that so? Because we will rely on the similarities of the color. Since uh, we rely on the change of the color, so uh, as much as possible, we keep the color the same. Okay, so this is what we want. Uh, rough titration has been performed for you. Okay, so we have known earlier that uh, it will be around uh, 29 milliliter. Yeah, so in this case, if uh, you have known that it will be around 29 milliliter, then the next reading uh, and the next uh, equation is actually to find out which one is the consistent volume. Okay. Now, since I already know, uh, can you just read the data? Just now, the, the first reading is 0 0.8. 0 0.8. We keep that, yeah, 0 0.8. So plus around 29 milliliters. So I should stop at around uh, 29.8. Yeah. So then what I will do to save the time. But remember, you can only do this if you already know the rough titration. I flow it and mix it uh, consistently until around 29.8. Okay. That's why in performing titration, if you have color blind, you are uh, eligible to be assisted actually, because you really need to determine the change of color. And 
and it happened also uh, with uh, IDCS EMAS level student. So if you're color blind, you have the right to get assistance in terms of determining the color change. Okay, how uh, it's still changing the colorless, but it's almost there. How do I know that it's almost there, Bujo? Because if you put a drop and the color change is not as soon as possible anymore, it means that your point of change is almost there. See? Previously, as you drop it and then shake a little bit and then it's gone. Now, see, it's still diffused, right? Look at how the color diffuses, see? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. You have to be patient. A bit more. A bit more. A bit more. Almost there. Almost there, almost there, oh, almost there, almost there, almost there, ah, almost there, still disappeared, but it has diffused to all over the solution. Almost there, aha, that's what I, okay. Okay, Pat, please do the reading. Oh, this one, I can also help you. 29.55, yeah, 29.55, 29.55, yeah. Okay, so it means the uh, initial reading is 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and then uh, the final reading is 29.55, okay. This is the first titration, yeah? I already prepared two sample, yeah, two sample. So I will do it again for you. Oh, I also want to try. Okay, so uh, maybe you can fill it again. Remember guys, if you want to fill in, always put the waste, the waste glass, yeah? So that it won't uh, spill, okay? As long as about 13. Now this time, yeah, Pa Carlos is going to uh, do the titration. So why is that so? Uh, just to try whether the volume is consistent or not. Yeah. Now before that. Yeah, uh, please do the reading. It's not zero yet, so yeah, it's not zero yet, so you have to make it into zero first. I will take some of the yeah. You can do pipe it out or you can actually also flow it, but either way, yeah, either way that you choose the best for you. Okay. Okay, it's zero. Zero. Okay, Pa, are you ready? Uh, please do the reading first. This is your yeah. Zero. Zero. Okay. Remember why? Uh, why this? Now what is all? Okay. Now, Mr. Macarons will do it. Okay, here we go. Actually, right now you can still uh, uh, do a bit faster until around uh, 20. This is not a zero, right? Yeah. Mm. 
So make sure you keep checking the what is it? Yeah. yeah. The conical pass while doing this. So the color will mix. Okay. It's already on when this something here, so I need to close it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's the reading. Okay. So the last result is twenty-eight point four. Twenty-eight point four. Okay, guys. So if we see from the product, yeah, of the color. You can take a look how the color uh, change a little bit, yeah, it, it gets darker. Meanwhile, the volume is not really changing. Why is that so? Okay, because for your information, yeah, uh, hydrogen peroxide, okay, is easily decomposed. Hydrogen peroxide is easily decomposed into oxygen and water, especially in room temperature. So actually, with the difference of one hour between the first reaction and the second reaction, it means that in the same volume, there might be a change of moles of the hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so that's why actually uh, we always have to prepare the hydrogen peroxide fresh before the reaction is started. Okay, guys, I think that's all first for our demonstration. After this, what we are going to do with you and me is how we are going to use our data to solve the questions that are given. Thank you so much. Until we meet again in our next demonstration. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, we are going to do the... Ini ya, Pak. Pak. Okay. Dan that one done, yeah.